Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. The nations of the world have been placed by God in the care of the church. You and I are God's authority within the earth. I want to talk to you about dominion, heavenly dominion, and the believer's authority. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting right into this message. Let's worship now. are heavenly representatives, representatives of the authority of God. Now, it was always God's intention that man would have dominion in the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, the Bible says this, So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 through 8 says this, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. You and I will be held accountable with how we've stewarded our authority in the earth. Now, am I saying that the church is going to dominate and take over the world in a military sense. No, of course not. 
I'm simply saying that the influence in the nations of the world belongs to the church. We should be the ones speaking and directing culture. We should be the ones speaking and directing how the nations will go. This, of course, is taking into account all of the end time events that should occur, and we know that all things do tend toward disorder, and that eventually God will begin a new creation. But while we are here, and while we are stewarding what God has given to us, we must seek to establish the kingdom of God within the earth. Now, as I said, it was always God's intention that man would be the authority in the earth, but after the fall, dominion needed to be restored to man. So Christ came, He died on the cross, He came to die on the cross for our sins so that we might be forgiven and reconciled to God. But one of the other effects of Christ's sacrifice was that man would now regain his spiritual dominion. Christ came as a man and took back that dominion as a man. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9-11 through 11 say this, Therefore God elevated him, to the place of highest honor, and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Ephesians 1, 19-23 says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is His body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. So Christ came as a man and regained that dominion as a man. And because you and I are in Christ, we too are seated in heavenly places, in that position of authority. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. You notice the scripture says that we have been seated, not that we will be seated. It's already been done. It's already been established. In the heavenly realm, we have been given authority that affects the earthly realm. That dominion actually continues now and into eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 says, Don't you realize that we will judge angels? So you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, it's a portion of a parable. It says this, The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. That parable in Matthew 25 was a parable on stewardship. But the time that it took place that Jesus was implying was the end times, was the end of all things. And those extra responsibilities that were gained on top of what had already been accomplished were representative of the believer's responsibilities in eternity. You and I are being tested here on earth with earthly things that we might become stewards of heavenly things in eternity. So the nations, for now, are in our care. Now again, I want to make sure I'm being very clear here. I'm not talking about dominating or subjecting people. I'm talking about having the authority to liberate people, having the authority to set people free, having the authority to destroy the works of the devil, not to dominate people, but to deliver them, not to overcome people, but to break off the bounds of their oppression, to come against the assaults of the enemy that come against the creation of God. We, with the love of God, establish the dominion of God, the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9-13, through 13, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Now there's a misconception about the kingdom of God and it keeps people thinking really small. Small-minded thinking has caused many to misunderstand the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is then and there, as I'll show you in a moment. But it's also here and now. Too often we think that the kingdom of God is something to be experienced later, something that will be obtained after we've passed into eternity, and that for now we should just accept the world as it is. After all, Things are going to end the way they're going to end. After all, Bible prophecy must come true. After all, perilous times will come. But knowing the future because of Bible prophecy doesn't release us from the responsibility of what God has called us to do here and now. Having dominion, as I said, is not about dominating people, but delivering them. It's about bringing that hope that comes from the gospel message to the nations of the world. It's about seeing the conversion of nature and heart. It's about seeing lives transformed with the love of God. So if we think too small, if we say to ourselves, well, things are the way they are and nothing will ever change. Well, things are the way they are and that's what the Bible says will happen. Then we'll never fulfill our mandate that God has given to us here and now. So yes, the kingdom of God is not of this world. John 18, 36 says, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. So it's then and there. But it's also here and now, it's precisely because the kingdom of God is not of this world that we ought to establish it in this world. Because the kingdom of God has not yet fully come, In this sense, in another sense it has, in one sense it hasn't. That's the mystery of the kingdom. But in this sense, we ought to be working to establish the dominion of God because Jesus told us, we just read it in Matthew chapter 6, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God is then and there, it's here and now, and it's also within you. Luke 17, 20-21 says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God, then and there, here and now, and within you. It would seem that there's a contradiction, but there isn't. All of the realities of the kingdom of God are true at once. It's then and there because there's something waiting for us there. It's here and now because God has called us to establish His kingdom here and now. It's within us for the purpose of it transforming us that we might speak truth that transforms those around us. Religious spirits attack whenever someone talks about dominion. Religious spirits attack whenever someone talks about establishing the kingdom of God. But this is the believer's authority. This is the responsibility that God has given to us. Again, this is not about taking over or subjecting people or oppressing people or pushing our ideology on people or forcing them to believe just as we believe. Of course, we know we have the truth, the only truth. But the way we spread the kingdom of God is not through dominating, but through delivering. Not through necessarily pushing it on people, but on presenting the love of God to them. The kingdom of God is established when a heart is transformed. The kingdom of God is established when the gospel is preached, someone receives it, and their lives are changed. The kingdom of God is established wherever souls are being saved. God has given us this authority. God has given us this responsibility. So my question to you is simple. What are you doing to exercise that authority that God has given to you? What are you doing to establish His dominion in the earth? What are you doing to establish the kingdom of God in the hearts of others? What are you doing to establish the kingdom of God here and now? Are you living in a way that suggests that you believe that the kingdom of God is waiting for you? 
We must be aware of all realities of the kingdom. And our lives must reflect those beliefs. We must be about our Father's business. This world needs transformation. It needs to be transformed. And God has given you that responsibility. God has given you that authority. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, Lord, that you would reveal sons and daughters. Lord, I'm asking that you would cause your people to see, to see the kingdom, to recognize their authority. And Holy Spirit, empower them to establish heaven on earth. Empower them to establish the will of God in the earth. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. And that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join our online church, Spirit Church, simply go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now to your comments. These comments come from a video that we released titled Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is a message that I ministered over at Hungry Gen with my friend, Pastor Vlad. He invited me to speak at that conference. And so I spoke on praying in the Holy Spirit. If you want a message that ties together the threads of praying in tongues, being led by the Spirit in prayer, uh, how to overcome emotional and mental barriers to prayer, how to establish a consistent prayer life, this message is something I put together to help tie those threads together, that someone might be able to watch this and be inspired and equipped to become a person of Spirit-led prayer. So if you haven't watched that yet, make sure you go and do that. And while you're doing that, make sure you're connected with us on all our platforms. Make sure to follow. And when you subscribe on YouTube, click that notification bell so that you can receive notices when we release new content. So here are the comments from Praying in the Holy Spirit. Remember, if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on another edition of Spirit Church, then leave a comment in the comment section right now. Rachel Dames writes, powerful teaching. This was for me. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Belinda Fernandez says, thank you, man of God. Your teaching was such a blessing to me. Please keep me in your prayers that I may grow in the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Damaris Coriano writes, this message was so awesome that even my nine-year-old daughter enjoys listening to you. Well, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not because of me, it's despite me. All glory belongs to Him. This is the Holy Spirit's channel, and there's a magnetism about the Holy Spirit. The next commenter writes, thank you so much for this great and powerful teaching. And finally, Nellie Meek says, thank you as always for your teaching and obedience to the Holy Spirit. It can be very discouraging working your way through prayer. I am learning a lot from the Holy Spirit and from your book, Inspired by Him, Praying in the Holy Spirit, to God be the glory. Well, thank you, Nellie, for that kind comment. Again, and indeed, to God be the glory. Now, since we're talking about establishing the kingdom of God, exercising your authority as believer, I want to talk to you about partnering with us in establishing the kingdom of God. Now, when I say establishing the kingdom of God, I'm talking about establishing the kingdom of God in hearts. And the way you do that is by preaching the gospel. When you preach the gospel, the hearer is transformed. When that person is transformed, they change their surroundings. And when someone changes their surroundings, they change the world. Help us change the world. Help us establish the kingdom of God. Help us spread light in dark places. Media is a powerful tool that we are leveraging to establish the dominion of God in the earth. So if you want to see the kingdom of God established, then I invite you to partner with our ministry financially on a monthly basis. If you'll partner with us for $10 or more a month, we will give you access to our monthly Zoom calls exclusive for our partners, where we give you behind the scenes information and first looks at some of the ministry announcements. You'll be the first to hear about all of the developments in the ministry. You'll also receive event seat reservations for you and your loved ones at any of our ministry events. You'll receive a discount code on all of our ministry apparel, 10% off. You'll also receive a beautiful Dove lapel pin, but you can wear it and show your support of the gospel. Of course, 
We give because we love the Lord. And so know that, yes, you're helping us do all those things. Yes, you're helping us see souls saved, lives transformed, people filled with the Holy Spirit. But included with all of that, you also get these wonderful partner benefits. We know you do it because you love Him, but those benefits are because we love you. If you partner with us for $30 or more a month, we'll give you all of those benefits, plus we'll send you one of the books from our book catalog. I'll sign it, send it to you, and thank you for partnering with us. That'll be your initiation gift. If you sign up for $100 or more a month, you're going to get all of those benefits, plus your partner discount will double to 20% off, and you'll get not one, but all four of those books. Do that today by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. That's where you'll go to sign up to become a monthly supporter. Be sure you check the latest partner offer. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. If you can't do a monthly gift, give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Whatever you do, do it today and help us establish the kingdom of God all around the world. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.